everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm joined today by Chris from Comic Tropes. Hey, welcome back to the show, man. Hello, double salute. You earned nice. it. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. No, Thank you uh, for having me. I love ch chatting with you. It's been same. I don't even remember how long it's been since I was on the show. Yep. I, we we've definitely talked in between. We have. We we bummed into each other at New York Comic Con this past year. That was awesome, right? And then we it both was. Into, well, I was um chatting with uh Daniel Warren Johnson, right? Yes, when we yes, all you guys were, and, and like the three of us had had a really fun conversation. It really was. That was a cool moment that I think if people who subscribe to both of us had seen, they'd have been like, "What is happening?" Uh, yeah, as it stands, yeah. I tried to geek out for everybody, but it was really cool. Um, you know, man, D Dubs is great. It was so. He's, I was like, "Oh man, you know him too. That's so great." great. Guy. Yeah, uh, but yes, no. I was thinking it must have been like the pandemic was when we the last time we we hooked up actually like on a channel it must have been. That was an aggressive time for all of us where we're like, let's get everybody. Let's talk to anybody and everybody. Let's do something <laughs> to get yeah. our minds off of this. Uh, so, yeah, we're, talk we're talking about uh, Free Comic Book Day and what it means to us, where it came from, and, and yeah. maybe what it could do to improve. But, like, moreover, I'm excited for you because you got a really cool golden opportunity. Uh, and as, as I... As I learned more about comic tropes, because I learned about comic tropes from like my YouTube recommendations years ago, it was just kind of mm -hmm. like, here's the channel you probably want to watch. And I'm like, you are correct. And uh, but I found out you're an artist in your own right. You've had your own experience working on comics yourself. And you. so it made sense that you'd be tapped to work on this project that is uh, coming out very soon, as I understand it. Or is it? A, it's not out yet. It'll be out in June. It, uh it, it, it's available like um, I'm doing a variant cover for Vampirella. Yeah. So I put a little statue up here, plug nice. myself. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. So Nick Barucci um, approached me and said, you know, I think that this would be something fun. You've got an audience. Like, why let, let's do something. I was like, that sounds like a lot of fun. I agree. So I, I think I created a pretty fun cover. I tried to sort of jam in as many, uh, you could call them the tropes or comic book cover cliches as I could in, in one cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's available through Indiegogo. Like it's a campaign uh, so that like we know exactly how many to order. Right. Okay. But that makes thank sense. Thank you for letting me plug that. I appreciate it. Oh no, of course. It. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited myself. I saw the cover uh, and it, it uh, immediately I was like, I see a couple of references slash tropes that you may, if you're a fan uh notice and uh yeah. so yeah i will i don't want to spoil it so please check out the campaign it's in the comments down below click it and you'll uh, you'll go right to it and you'll be able to see what we're talking about and thanks uh, and, buddy and be able to check that out because it's really cool obviously i'm gonna jump in on that as well because i want to get it myself a copy uh, well if, if you're willing to like uh help me i i've got an idea to how, how to help comic pop oh really well let's hear yeah. it man okay so here we go ready you every episode when you close you need to pull up a balloon and pop it. So <laughs> not only does that have good brand synergy, sure. Naturally. You're gonna get a lot of fetishists. You're gonna get so many. You're gonna double your audience with all sorts of cool perverts. That's you know, I have been looking to expand my pervert market. So I'm really uh I'm I'm very receptive to your suggestion. This actually hey. is it's so it's so close, it's eerie to one of my colleagues and normal co-host of this show joel used to have a show called comic smack oh he did and it was okay. just it was just the name of the show like he just called it it was his review show but he every episode he'd go welcome to comic smack and he would smack his own hand and that was like his whole thing he had a brand where like there was an open palm as part of the the whole initiative and i was like so when you said pop the balloon i'm like i immediately went to comic smack <laughs> and i'm like i man i feel like joel already did it <laughs> It's just you were like one or two degrees away from it. I had no yeah. idea that balloon popping was a fetish thing. You didn't know that? No, I'm I'm very unplugged when it comes to the uh the, yeah know, the, I, the fringe. We don't need to go down like that's a, not. A, 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 a whole tangent where I just like uh, destroy your naivete. That's please that's don't. Fine. Yeah, because I just yeah my my association with, with balloons is that they're festive. <laughs> they absolutely are. Yeah, they absolutely are. So, Don't worry about it. I'll I'll, I'll just sit uh, here instead doing my comic Drake uh, impression. Well, please do. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> how many? How many comic? Due to the YouTube vagaries references? of um, due to the vagaries of, of time zones, folks. It's it's super super late for Sal, and it's super super early for me. Yes. I, so I, everyone... I'm still waking up. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, and I have been awake for probably two hours. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to talk about Free Comic Book Day. You suggested it. You were like, hey, Free Comic Book Day, is that a thing that we should talk about? And I was like, why not? Because we've never really dabbled in it on this show and I've never really gotten a okay. chance to really get into it. When Free Comic Book Day launched in May of 2002, mm -hmm. where were you and did you participate? Yeah, um, I was living in Boston. I, I had already graduated college. I had like basically my first professional job in Boston. Um, I definitely remember going. I it's a little hard to remember because now we're, we are talking like 20 years. Uh -huh. um, I'm pretty sure I went to New England Comics in Cambridge, like Harvard nice. Square. Mm -hmm. Avid. Often in Ben Affleck and stuff. Right. <laughs> and Ben Edlund. And Ben Ed I did get to meet Ben Edlund several times growing up. Um, he was from like a, a couple towns over and and New England Comics published the tick and 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 um he would do like signings and stuff before anybody like really knew about it for those first two issues. Yeah. I, and I and I was younger, but uh, but I talked to him several times. Great guy. <sighs> Great That's guy. so cool. I it's I grew so up with cool. the tick as a you know the I, I I loved the comic. I heard about it through Wizard. I picked up the like back issues because of course like it hadn't quite caught yet. There was there were rumblings of an animated series in the works. Yeah. So I got which in on the did. tick that way, which he did. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I loved the cartoon, and I was hooked from there. And never got connected with Edland until New York Comic Con. I think. Uh, three or four years ago. Oh, cool. So you uh, have met him too. I've met him and I was very lucky to do it. It was, it was one of those weird things where I'm, there's an area in New York, in, in New York Comic Con where you got the main floor. This is, this is not for your benefit. You've been there. Uh, but you know, the Everyone. main floor and then on the side, like between two other big rooms, there's like this kind of no man's land of indie creators and like, you know, first time artists, sometimes there's like merchants that sell animation sales. It was just this, it's a grab bag of booths and you never know what you're going to find. And so I'm walking through there because I have to go through that every time. I actually know a few people who have a booth there every year. Mm. And I pass by the New England Comics booth and there's been, and Ben and just sitting there. And I'm like, what, what are you doing here, man? You weren't on the list. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> That was it, and he drew me a whole uh, a picture of the tick on a sketch cover, and it nice. was amazing. It was it was. It was, it was I amazing. have a sketch by him of um, Dean from Supernatural because, of course, he was <laughs> uh, one of the uh, writers and executive producers for many years on that show. I had no idea that Edlin was involved with that. I knew he was in television, but I didn't know he worked on Supernatural. That's awesome. Angel and a bunch of the Joss Whedon shows at the time, and then um, that's right. I remember seeing his name on Firefly, and I was like, because he wrote. I want to say he wrote, I don't remember which one he wrote. I think it was Janestown, but it might have been another one. I think but, it was actually. Yeah, I th I'm pretty yay. sure it was. I'm, yeah, I, so I was there. I, I got to check that that sounds right. That 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 twitches my spidey yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, his goal, just to be clear, like was um, always to sort of move into working in Hollywood. But mm -hmm. I always appreciated that like he used his own property to do that and didn't just license it. Like he stayed involved in the tick and, and worked on that cartoon. And that was yeah. sort of, and, and then he's also done a little bit of venture brothers too. Yes. Yes. That's he's right. like the only guy that's written episodes aside from, you know, the, the two creators. Yeah. Well, and I think uh, Richard Liebman Smith, the co-writer on nearly every episode of the original animated series also worked on venture brothers or had some association with that show, but under a different name. Like I think Richard Liebman Smith is a pseudonym. Uh, or or a nom de plume, but uh, but yeah, this so, is the free comic book day talk that these folks came for. We're all of a sudden right. just talking about how much we love Ben Edlund, but he's great. Listen, he's really th great. That's why they're here. They're here for the for for the tangents. Um, <laughs> Tangent but, town. That's right. That's so cool that you got to go. That you went to. I I I remember growing up seeing ads for comic book stores that I would never in my life go to, which included New England Comics and Mile High Comics. Yeah. And Midtown Comics, and yeah. I I would go to all but to, all but one. I I did hit miles mile high when I went to uh, visit Benny the Comic Storian, and yeah, and Midtown is in Midtown. I was there. I've been there like a hundred times. But uh, yeah, right. And I have not um, yet been to of, the Penn Station location. You know, uh, as long as we're talking about this, like you know, yeah. I just gotta say, like you know, young teenager Chris discovering. Mm -hmm. New England comics like this was folks before there was any internet and stuff like that. 
but my mother knew I liked comics. She looked in the yellow pages, looked for comic books, found one like in a town about like 25 minutes, excuse me, away. Mm -hmm. And we go in and it was just, it was just amazing to discover all these things that you didn't see on the spinner racks at the time. So yeah, it was a little before the tick came out. That's why I was able to discover that. But that, like I discovered Ninja Turtles before there was ever a cartoon, you know, like I was, I was seeing all these black and white comics uh, at the time, Usagi Yojimbo and stuff. It was really exciting. I even remember seeing like um, that digitally created version of Iron Man crash. Do you remember like, that's like a super early cg comic i i only the only iron man cg comic i remember is the exo manowar iron man crossover that tied in with the video game <laughs> yeah a little awkward that with that, that one yes <laughs> anyway it's just amazing like do you remember your first time going to a comic book store hell yeah oh yeah yeah no i um i i got into comics in a weird way where it was like very much like you know not comic related like comics were just kind of like hove into my field of vision because i was a child you know, people go, well, give them a comic book, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but um, the first time I ever went to a comic book store, it, it was one of those illumination moments because um, in my town, there was one, but I didn't oh, know. Okay. It, right. So because it, it didn't have a it had a very innocuous name. It was Pegasus Enterprises. So I had no idea it was a comic book store and their yeah. logo was a Pegasus. <laughs> OK. Right. So, uh, yeah, I went to it because I remember asking my mom, I was like, I, I would like to get more of these because when you got comic books back in the day, you get them at like a 7-Eleven or off the spinner rack at like a drugstore. Yeah. And so I heard about comic books and comic book stores. And I, I think the, the idea was I, I, I must have seen it in a cartoon, you know, like someone go to a comic book store. Right. And I was like, I'd like to go to a comic book store. My mom's like, I think there's one in town and we go to it. And that was my regularly scheduled that was the comic book store i would go to until they closed that's um, awesome which was yeah and, and that was very much i don't know about you but my comic book store owner was like my bartender <laughs> uh i guess i see that yeah yeah right like he would dispense friendly advice uh and <laughs> he was very much one of those like self-loathing i wish i didn't have to do this kind of comic book store owners not in a like i've seen that now in today's world the comic book store owners that don't want to own a comic book store mm-hmm. it's very different from back when they killed superman and yeah. they were like i don't want to do this but i'm making so much money i don't care <laughs> uh but he he very much was like you know i i would get i would start to go down the rabbit hole i'd be like oh i really want to get this and he goes yes, blah, 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 blah. you don't want to do that you know, like there was a guy who came in. I'm sure you had a character and I want to hear about that character if you have a recollection of it that used to come in every every month. There was a guy dressed all in black. He wore a leather jacket. He had a big cowboy hat, glass, like sunglasses, indoors, boots, and it was all black. And they called him the man in black. They like literally everyone in the store, the owner said, oh, the man in black is here. And he would get his comic books and he would leave. And I'm like, what? A, and I, remember, you know, it was like an eight year old. You're like, what a cool guy. And my comic book store guy goes, he is not cool. He lives with his mother. You do not want to be that man. <laughs> it's just like, wow. Yeah. It's very harsh, yeah. but also uh, it helped me not emulate elements that I think might have uh, hindered my social development. <laughs> if I was uh, if I was eight or nine looking for those, I those definitely, cues. I definitely, I, I remember a guy a little like that in the sense that like, um, yeah, I was specifically again uh going to nec but after i graduated college and sort of returned to boston area um there was always this i mean sort of older not old but like you know he's probably only in his like 40s or 50s or something sure. but he, time had done him like you know the, the ravages of time had, had yeah, city miles had, yeah had been there. <laughs> um and he would just sort of lean against the counter and talk the ear off of like the shop owners or really anyone that would listen about like, yeah, all his theories on comics and like, you know, try to like make the sort of awkward jokes that you just sort of cringe at. And it's, yes. it's hard to remember now because it's so long ago. But but I think we all know those people that are like make comic book jokes and 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 they would never play anywhere else. No, know? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What if the Punisher had the Care Bear stare? You know, like something weird <laughs> like that. And you're just sort of like, you know, like, oh. Yeah, like, I guess that's what kind if? of like a weird observation that kind of stops and starts right when you said it, but okay. Yeah, not really even jokes, just sort of like weird observations. Mm-hmm. It was, it was awkward. It was awkward. He was always sort of there. 
Oh yeah. 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 And like, the, you... I remember the shop owner w- 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 or clerk, whatever she, she would go like, well, I really have to ring these guys up. It's like, <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But then he'd just stay there. And right. He's not going them. anywhere. Yeah. He today, going they're, anywhere. today they're called booth barnacles. Those are the folks who don't, uh, who go to comic cons. They hang out at a booth all day. They don't go anywhere. I've never heard that one. No, you never heard of barnacles. the booth barnacle. Yeah, that was uh, popularized. <laughs> I recall from uh, the the Penny Arcade people for PAX, where it's okay. like folks would go to a convention, they'd hang out at a booth, and they'd be like, "Yeah, like, hey, well, like, let's let's talk," and I want to keep this going. And they don't get the cue that it's like there are people here. You need to. And you know what? Now, now that I think of it, uh, you know, maybe maybe some of them are somewhere on the spectrum and they can't take the cues. So I'm not going to like judge all of no, them yeah. with like a broad paintbrush. But all I'll say is. It, it can be awkward. That's right. And in the 80s and 90s, we had no, there was no method of categorization. There was categories. no reference, like, there was, like there was, it wasn't talked about, yeah. Exactly, exactly. You just kind of like looked the other way and moved on. Now it's like, hey, you, there's more, I hoped that there is more. Um, I've got one. Understanding, yeah. I've got one. Um, later than that, I was, um, I, I, I taught for a while, for, for, for a couple of years, a writing for comics class when I was living in D.C. Nice. There was a writer's center uh, in Bethesda, Maryland, and some anonymous individual had given them a huge grant if they would teach a writing for comics class. So they oh had my to God. Look for, like <laughs> local people. Yeah. And I was part of like this group called the D.C. Conspiracy. We'd meet every month and we'd self-publish comics and newspapers and stuff like that. So And they approached us and, and, and for a while. I taught this class and one semester, this one guy like comes up, like, you know, like right before class, the first class begins and he just opens like, you know, a um, loose leaf notebook, you know, lined and everything. Uh And all these drawings of um, Sonic and it was like porno Sonic. Of course. Yeah. And he's like, um, you know, what can you do to help me, you know, get this stuff uh, out to the masses? And I was like, (laughs) we're going to, we're going to be focusing mostly on writing and structure and stuff like that. I, yeah. I, I'm glad you're passionate about this. No, I don't need to see any more. Yeah. It was yeah, no. pretty awkward. Like, you know, like, I'm just like, I really don't need to see this. Right, right. You, you call the guy who was involved with, like, the expansion of the Knuckles universe. The guy that, uh, you, you referenced Comic Drake. He made an amazing video about that guy. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken Penders, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, way to pull yeah, it. Nice. That- He's an interesting character. I was considering doing an episode on that too, but I was, I was sort of afraid that I would that I would be too mean to this guy if I talked about it. Yeah. And so yeah, I yeah. sort of kept putting it off and and Comic Drake has covered it and he gives it's, the history so you can Exactly. Watch he video. nailed it. I I really appreciate sometimes that we have this space where it's like there are a lot of different creative people and I'm like, "You know what? That's all that I need to say about it. I don't have to say anything about it now. Thank sometimes. you." <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, when it comes to free comic book day, uh, I remember I was at college when that happened, and I was uh, I was living in a house with some guys. Uh, it was a theme house for um, my you know a bunch of like minded individuals and uh, nerds, you might say. And one of them was a comic book fan who I've come to know and love, and he. He brought his comic book collection with him to school. Wow. And we and his room, like the room that we like not rented, it was like a theme house, but like in the room, the bedroom that he got, it was a walk-in closet and he filled it with his comic books so he could read them whenever he wanted to. And I would visit every once in a while uh, before I moved in inevitably. And he was like, I'm going to the comic book store. You want to come? By that point, I'd quit comic books. I've been out of the, I've been out <laughs> for a while. Uh, I had been out since. Pulled uh, back in. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. Comics do that. Like you, they will kick you out. They'll pull you back in. It's why Jack Kirby says they'll break your heart because it's not. It's not because they will break your heart in a like very clean fashion. It's no, they'll break your heart over over many years through lots of wear and tear. And uh, so we go to the comic shop, and he's like, "Oh, it's free comic book day," and I'm like, "Oh, great. What is that?" And he's like, "Oh, you just get free comic books." So I go in to a comic book store in Richmond, Virginia that no longer exists. And, uh, you know, you go on the rack and I'm like, all right, well, I guess I want to try out the new Spider-Man. I want to try out this Batman book. I just grabbed like six comic books. And I'm like, all right, I guess these will be my free ones. And they were like, no. <laughs> oh, you just grabbed regular. Yeah. I just comics. Got a, yeah. Cause they said there was a limit of like six or five or something like that. And I went, okay, well then these are the ones I want for free. 
And they were like, that's not how this works. And I I'm bet like, that happens a lot still. I think it happens every year. And I know that I like it is a frustrating thing for them, but it, it's not terribly clear. You know, all the, I, all the accoutrements just say free comic book day and the date. They don't go like some free comics on this day. Go over there, you know? Right. I think that, you know, because we've been doing it for 20 years, a lot of stores have figured out how to very clearly mark a big table up front or something yes. like that and say, like, these are the free comics. Mm -hmm. But I bet the, the, there's still some confusion by people that haven't been to a comic store or at least haven't been in a number of years like yourself. I, I, right. I have to imagine that always happens. Oh, yeah. Well, especially if the if it's doing its job, because I mentioned that free comic book day was created to get people to go to comic book stores, just an incentive. Come in. If you if you go in that store, you will leave with something for free. Yeah. Okay. And I guarantee you that's that's the case every year. Every year somebody like people come in, they go, which ones are the free ones? You know? And uh hopefully it, it works. Hopefully it keeps the you know, it, it also alerts them to like what comic book stores might be in their area, if there uh is a comic book store nearby and yeah, and what and, and, and the whole culture that surrounds it, you know. We can talk later about some of like maybe the problems with it, but I think that like if we're talking about like, you know, what what worked from the beginning was yeah. You know, it's a clear brand. It is free stuff, which will draw people into the stores. Um, you know, people kind of can um, get mad at Diamond sometimes because they had a monopoly for a while. Or maybe yeah. they, people feel they're charging too much for shipping. You know, there, there are issues. But they've done some good things, too, for, for comic stores. And this, this idea was also, like, you know, one of them where they're going to eat the shipping. The comic book stores are going to, like, you know, just pay the... The, the bare minimum cost from the publishers and the publishers are sort of like, you know, uh, eating the cost of production. Yeah. Just to be clear, you know, like there, when you go to get free comic book day, your store has paid for those comics. Like right. it hasn't paid as much as a normal comic, but they still pay for them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it does work for comic stores in terms of marketing, or at least the smart comic book stores can make it work for them because they typically will come up with their own special things for that day. And I've seen that grow and grow over two oh, yeah. years. Because I definitely don't remember that first year having, say, cosplay or raffles or things like that. But oh, no. Coming now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember in the beginning it was just... And my association with Free Comic Book Day when it first began was very much a kind of like, we have to do this. Like I remember that, that store in particular was pretty annoyed that they had to do They were like... I've been getting people coming in all day and I'm like, Oh no, what a problem to have. But you know, they're like, but, all they, but they're doing what you're doing where they're just grabbing comics off the shelf. And now I got to deal with it. And yeah. you know, they're like, actually the comic books are over there and they didn't have like a good place. That was a shop that was very much, it was in a strip mall, like in one of those kind of stores where it's like, it's a strip mall that you see on the outside. You go in through some doors, there's a hallway and then there's other stores on the inside. Yeah. You go in and it is just everything is stacks and you know there's their shelves sure but you know they're full of month old merchandise and everything is just piles and piles of things so they had to like allocate space for the free comic book day books which for sure they hadn't done in 25 years it was um you know it was a weird situation but i'm very happy to say that every free comic book day t this year or uh, over the last uh, let's say 10 years I have had a really positive experience with all the comic shops in my areas. Definitely. Definitely. Because they, they really do lean into it. They're like, this is a great opportunity for us to create promotions. Uh, there's never not a sale. Yeah. And any of my comic book stores. Yeah. They'll be like trade paperbacks, 15% off or back yes. issues, 10%, things like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which is oh, smart. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. Um, my comic shop does, uh, but they also do. It's funny. I think that, it, and it's it's the kind of thing where it, it started a movement in its own way. Like, I know that there are comic shops in my area that I had never heard of before. Mm. Or if I had, I my association with them was they existed and they were just like, buy the books. That was the end of it. But right. because of Free Comic Book Day, and it's triggering this kind of like event that you go to. Like, oh, a day it's you a, go. Like, it's a holiday. It is an event. Like, yeah. Yeah. That it, yeah. That it triggered remember... them into like making promotions more. You know, there was a lot of, they've always put it in the first, um, like, uh, week of May. 
Yep. And that's always been, uh, well, I shouldn't say always, almost always been a, uh, a week where a big superhero movie gets released. And the first True. one was Spider-Man. And there was a lot behind that. I would, I would say that it was somewhat close to 1989 Batman. And if, mm. if you're not old enough to remember, uh, not you necessarily, Sal, you're, you're old as dirt, but <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that weren't, um, you know, maybe even born, let alone reading comics and stuff. Certainly. 1989, you've got to know that the year building up to that Batman movie, I've never seen so much sort of pop culture immersion. Yeah. Uh, everybody was wearing Batman and Joker t-shirts and hats, even if they weren't comic book fans. It was, it was really, really prevalent. So oh, much yeah. merchandise. Mm -hmm. And 2002 Spider-Man, there was... There was a lot of excitement for that. There was there was a sense that like, oh, the technology has like got to a point where this is this looks like it's going to be cool. Yes. Um. So so to tag on to that was smart. Like I, I but I sort of remember it felt like. For that first year, I was like, are they doing this just to get people excited for the movie or something? I didn't know. That yeah. First year. Um, you know what's also interesting that's related? It, it, not that this is apropos of anything, but every every May, it's always been a Marvel movie. There's never been like there's never Good been DC. like a DC movie or, or something like that, or, yeah. or a Hellboy or, or a Crow or whatever, you know, like <laughs> Bloodshot. <laughs> right. They've Bloodshot. Never... God, when did it, I think it came out in March this uh during the pandemic, but uh like right yeah. when the pandemic like started. it dropped in the worst. I feel possible. like it, even though that movie isn't perfect, that it probably would have done better if it had like just come it, out the year before. I, really I agree. Yeah. It wasn't, no, that I, it wasn't that it wasn't that bad. It wasn't the I've seen much worse. Yeah. comic book or action movies yeah the, Hell, I've seen action Vin Diesel movie, movies. I, I, I sort of felt bad for Vin Diesel like sincerely like that that movie wasn't too bad yeah yeah I think you could if we were to really get into it I think we could probably draw some parallels between Vin Diesel and The Rock in their uh connection and dependence on a on a new franchise because you know mm. Black Adam had the same thing where The Rock's like I'm putting all, I'm all in on this thing here we go boy and was it, he it didn't pan out Vin Diesel did the same thing with Bloodshot but uh yeah, yeah it happens, you know, but um, yeah, anyway, yeah. I was just saying that like, no, it was funny really that, like tied yeah. into that Spider-Man movie that first yeah. years of comic book day. I have always had a good time at free comic book day, and it's easy to talk about the marketing and the comic book stores and like what works and what doesn't. There's not many free comic book day comics that I remember. There's a few, but there's not many. No, that's sort very of true. tied to like talking about a creator. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, no, that's I do very true. remember there was a good Walking Dead one mm. that gave like some backstory to like some of the important characters at the time, like Michonne and the governor and stuff. There yeah. was a good, there was a good Scott Pilgrim one mm. uh, before even like volume three of that book had come out. Mm -hmm. But most of them always feel like it's just they're going through like, the motion. The, it's very. This like, is filmed. the next Marvel event. Here's like ten pages to preface it and get you up to speed and yeah i don't know that that's as exciting for me even if it has like the top talent oh yeah i want to see something a little more original usually mm -hmm. yeah i i don't have high expectations of the books themselves anymore i think after 20 years for me free comic book day has become an excuse for comic book stores to do something more exciting like i agree. the, the my comic shops will do half off trades. Yep. Or, wow. That's yeah. a good one. Oh, I know. And here's the thing. Uh, I try to make free comic book day an event where I will hit no fewer than four shops. Whoa. Where I'm just like, let's go to all of them and That's... just see it. Like what their, what their deals are. And invariably yeah. somebody had an incredible one. And uh, you know, that uh, there's a, there's a shop that is in the, it's in the, the, uh, the, the school store of the Joe Kubert school. And they will do dollar comics. And it's like 30 long boxes of dollar comics. That's so and cool. It's really cool. And so you could spend like all day just, just in comics. And uh, Sal, I'm not kidding. Like, let, let it, folks watching this, like, yeah, let Sal know in the replies if this is a good idea or not. 
you should take a camera with you to 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 show all of that like so that you yeah. could compare the different stores i think that would be so interesting to see like you know you and tiffany or like yeah. you know your buddies like ben or something like go mm -hmm. to these and 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 show what's special about it i i don't yeah. know if you're like i i think that that would be something fun to watch absolutely but I'll, I'll leave it up to the viewers like in the comments yeah we've done, we've done them before like years ago but even then it was it was much more about you know it, it, we were more the focus than the comics and so i like uh i like the idea of kind of showing this is the this is what the the experience is like get out there and do it um i yeah. usually do two comic stores i've done that okay. like in, in place everywhere i i usually hit two i've never done four i did have friends in dc that like definitely they they got up first thing in the morning yep rusty and joe and, and they would hit like <laughs> six stores oh they they, they and and they documented like with pictures and stuff but they did oh. and i think they still do they're, they're great guys um yeah uh two is enough for me because that's yeah. just enough for me yeah uh but uh i will say that i i now go to a store uh here in washington state um well, i'll plug them atomic comics in tacoma oh yeah and, okay and, I've heard and of them. what i like about what they do is they they build it up, and you tell me if any of your stores do this. They um, hire local cosplayers to like stand oh, outside yeah. and take pictures. Mm -hmm. They definitely have sales. You've got to have like a bunch of sales, and then they'll have a raffle for like various merchandise. Like you you'll get a raffle ticket for coming in, and you drop it in whichever one you want to try to go for. And at the end gotcha. of the day, they give away like you know statues and Funko Pops and things like that. Yeah, yeah, we've done. I've seen the raffle done before, but it's very rare. Like, I, 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 if, if I, like I the raffle idea. yeah, me too. I think that's a great idea. My, um, one of my local stores actually used to do a thing where he'd have it. It wasn't fun. It wasn't uh free comic book day related, but it was just for his own edification. Like he'd, he'd rent a like VFW hall and then have like his own comic book store related comic con and that's where i saw most of the raffles being done but one of my local okay. shops uh zap comics and wayne will do um uh they'll do a raffle i remember uh i saw their raffle listing where they're like here's the things we're giving away and they they were really disappointed i, I remember they didn't have like anything dc related that was signed and mm -hmm. i had on to the dc rebirth WonderCon panel in uh, at emerald city a couple of years or no at WonderCon a couple of years back uh and i don't know if uh you didn't did you go to that one which one uh WonderCon when they did the re the dc rebirth announcement no okay that was that was the last time dc made a big splash i think in terms of like marketing uh but right. but at that event um they had all these like DC rebirth lithios that uh, Jim Lee drew. And it was like a little preview of like, what's going to happen, all the costume changes and stuff. And he signed all of them at the end of that presentation. You know, everyone made sure they got one and then they left, but like Jim Lee signed a thousand of them. What? So they're just, they're just lying around. So I scoop wow. up like two or three of them and I bring them home with me. And so I'm like, all right, now I got two or three of these uh, Jim Lee signed lithios. So I gave one to zap. I was like, would this be something? And they're like, so it became their like centerpiece of like, you can win this at free comic book day this year. Oh, cool. Uh, so that was really nice. So I was like, That's yeah, nice of right. you. Yeah, I was very happy to like contribute to that. And, you know, it didn't hurt that I had one or two more left over. So it was all right. But no, but that, that, that is great. That's, yeah. that's so nice of you. Yeah, so um, somebody's got it. Yeah. Uh, have you, is there anything unique you've ever seen done at a free comic book day aside from the things that I just sort of listed? Um, not aside really. from like sales and raffles yeah it's sales like raffles pretty... cosplayers are it's very rare but i i have seen them like joker's child does one where they'll have cosplayers that that are there um but it's it's so rare nowadays nowadays i've seen it kind of like dwindle like i don't know when if i looked at like the years that they did them certainly in the last three there's been almost they, they practically don't even do anything because of COVID restrictions and whatnot, you know, uh, Dewey's will do the, uh, the, the dollar bins, but rarely will I see like a massive kind of like groundswell of, of, of excitement and, uh, and fanfare like I had over the last, let's say like eight years. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I, it, yeah, it's rare that I'll see anything really exciting lately. You, um... I'm yeah. I'm seeing more people saying like, 
I'm, I'm seeing more people do less. You know, like I'm seeing comic shops go, the comic, the free comics are over there. And I'll hmm. be like, oh, are you doing a sale or anything? They're like, no. <laughs> That's interesting. I feel no. like at, at my local stores, there's still a line to get in. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that they'll like, some of these stores will come out and like give away like say posters or swag like that. Or yeah, like that's pins. cool. They'll just give it away to people in the line as they, as they wait, they, they still do that. But um, you yeah. kind of live close to, to some of the, some famous stores closer than some of us anyway. Yes. You know, have you ever gone to say Midtown? Have you ever gone to Jay and Silent Bob secret stash for like, have you gone to any of those for a free comic book? Day? I've never been to Jay and Silent Bob secret. I, I would never go to Midtown comics for for free comic book day only because I, I, I hate going to Manhattan. <laughs> it I is like such it. a pain. I, I, it's actually not bad. Like it's a, if it's, if it's not trafficked, it's a 45 minute ride for me, but uh i just don't like being there it's okay it smells and it's loud and i and i i just every time i get there i'm like i just want to get the hell out of here um plus midtown is you know mid midtown's midtown they the, the prices are a little higher than they should be and the and there's not a lot they of have room. a good amount of inventory they kind of carry everything they do carry everything that's true if you're looking for something they've got it no, that's that is there's no question about that and the statues that, are that's what i find useful whenever i like you know visit new york I do stop by at least Me once too. just because I'm going to go through Times Square. So I go up there and there's usually a couple things that for whatever reason haven't been in stock somewhere. They've mm -hmm. usually got it in stock there because it's just That's fair. kind of big. Yeah, yeah. Plus there's those stairs. And they're just insane. The stairs aren't fun. They do have an no. elevator, you know. What? <laughs> I had no idea. Well, how do you think that like different how do you think they... people get up there? I, I just assumed they didn't. <laughs> What do you think that they like have the diamond freight like go up those stairs every day? I don't know. I, I yeah, no, they, they do. I, I would not be surprised. You can ask about that. That's amazing. Oh crap! Well, that's <laughs> that's a game changer. Uh, well, there you go. Although I, I think it's probably mean, for because they're it's it's a it's narrow for freight and people who haven't been there. It's mm -hmm. narrow and 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 the stairs are kind of steep. So it, it it yeah, you hike up a full story to get to like the first floor and then they have a second floor above that. Yes. So. Which it's really cool. It's a cool store. Uh, and I still haven't been to their second location or their, I think they have a third location. I don't remember. I think they have but, three, but yeah. Yeah. What uh, about Jay and Silent, Silent Bob? Have you been to that one? I, I, I know the owners and I love that store, but I've never, I, I, again, it's, it's funny. Cause it's like, Oh, I can go 45 minutes into the city or I can go an hour to red bank. And so either way I'm like, but I got four or five stores within 15 minutes of me uh but as far as jay and bob's because is concerned i don't remember them doing anything really exciting okay. besides it being you know kind of a, a magnet store in its own right um a little more i pop think culture based uh-huh but i've seen that uh, they are innovating more lately since they moved uh okay. to their new location which is only like a few stores down from where they were but uh yeah i need to I would like to find out actually that's a really great question because I do love that shop and uh since they're like they're getting more people coming in like they just had Mark Bernardin and uh Philip Kennedy Johnson do signings and it's the first time I've seen like a signing yeah. at JM Bob's for you know in a long time so uh, I cool. hope that free comic book day is a big deal for them uh it, it's certainly a great opportunity for them um yeah should we talk about like maybe some of the criticisms oh sure yeah I don't events? have too many I mean uh, you you kind of touched on one which is that while Free Comic Book Day is great as a gateway, I think it's a great opportunity, you know, especially for all ages comics or for independent comics That's to true. get younger people into the in, in into the hobby. Uh, Marvel and DC have not used Free Comic Book Day to any significant acclaim in a long time. Like it's just I, I you, when you mentioned. Um, books made specifically for free comic book day that could be important or impactful. I, I thought of, uh, there was like Marvel made this really undersized copy drawn by Jim Chung. And I think, uh, Bendis wrote it and it was just this really cool. It was a, the heroic age and it was a completely original story that Good. was in continuity that where, where they fought some, snow-based villain i don't remember what it was uh that, that's how memorable it was it might have been frost giants now that i think about it but uh it was a really cool issue and i really liked the art and the fact that like a member of the you know the top tier was working on it and that it segued into something important sure um but 
you know, for the most part, like at least they haven't gone into just making them into re some of them do where they're just reprints. Yeah. It's like DC book will be long Halloween again. Uh, you know, you know I, I definitely think that um, I, I, I'm positive. I've seen some young adult stuff by like scholastic. I'm positive. I've seen some manga stuff by Viz. Oh yeah, but I don't think that it stands out the same way that obviously those things stand out at you know your Barnes and Nobles, your Targets, your WalMarts, and stuff like yeah. that. Like you know, like that's that's the stuff that sells, and it and it does get a little lost in the shuffle, maybe because of like they they're still printing it at like floppy size, and and that's uh -huh. just not the format people are expecting for yeah. those kind of things. I don't yeah. know, but um, you know, like I definitely think if if those things could make a bigger presence that that would be popular that's fair yeah i think that uh it's funny what you see disappear because you know if you get there it, i don't i don't care enough to get there first anymore no uh, especially since i've been taught that like the free comic book day books are essentially promotional material they, so they i don't really are. Right, so I don't need to get it. Like I just go because it's fun. I don't, and, and I go for the sales. I don't need to get the free. Like I could leave with no free comic book day books for the most part. Uh, but it does get people in the door. The uh, event is always this. fun for us. Like the exactly. event is fun. It's like a it, holiday for comics. It is. It really is. It's a it's a great excuse to like celebrate during a time when there's really nothing on the horizon when it comes to you know fanfare. And um, that's my favorite part is just going yeah. to a comic store and having a bunch of people and having something special going on. But I totally agree with you, Sal. Yeah. The free comic book day things aren't necessarily the overall draw for me anymore. Mm -mm. No, and, no, I, I, but I'm thrilled to see them disappear. Like, and that's the, yeah. the point I, the point I I'm, I'm making is like, when I get there, it's, it's always interesting to see what's gone when I get Oh yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, and yeah. it's always dark horse is so smart about it. There's just always an avatar. The last airbender free comic book day book. Sure. And like, that goes and that goes so, immediately and and batman will go you know like batman it, will go if there's a batman cover it'll go yeah um i i, I saw jimmy pomiati post this just like within the last week i think oh. and it uh, about free comic book day and it's it's such a good point he says like you know if the goal is to get new readers yes why are we primarily having this at comic shops where people already go for comics <laughs> And it's right. so true. You keep wondering, like, you know, like, why can't places like at least Marvel and DC, when there's like a big movie coming out, uh -huh. why can't they get a little bit of shelf space somewhere at the movie theater? Like, why can't yeah. they work out a deal there to sell yeah. some of those comics? Why can't we see some of this stuff like Free Comic Book Day make it to the old fashioned newsstand? You know, like if, if you had it in a convenience store or Rite Aid, you know, like your things like a that. Walgreens like, or 7 Eleven, that'd be amazing. Yeah, it's probably going to get into the hands of some kids that haven't read comics or yeah. adults. And, 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 you know, a subway, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like just yeah. public transportation, like, you know, like the, those kind of newsstands. That's the kind of place where airports like th these right. are the places that they need to think about like you know places where people have some time to kill yes um yeah. well and boy, there are kids that... like where there are kids there and they're a captive audience because you know as i the point i i, I love to make is that comic books are competing with literally like, whereas comic books are an entertainment medium that you pay for so mm -hmm. you put it in the bracket as video games movies you know whatever yeah. Uh, in the 80s and 90s, their competition was video games for the most part. And definitely, you know, and that was and television. And now it's everything like now comic books are competing with movies, TV, video games, all the all the same the stuff. Kids can pick up their phone and do a million things with them. Uh huh. Oh, they also have to deal with their own brand management because I'm 11 and I have a huge I have a two million follower TikTok account. And I'm doing, you know, and I, I gotta, I can't worry about reading a comic book. I have to, you know, entertain a thousand people because that's, this is the new world I live in. Like the, it, the competition is, is fierce. Get, getting people to read in general is bigger than like the responsibility of comics. You know, Completely. like reading, we know reading is like so pleasurable. You get yep. to 
use your imagination and it enhances whatever you're doing. Whereas like something else is more passive. If you, I mean, again, I guess a video game is a little interactive, but you're still like within the confines of it. Um, I yeah. guess you could argue the same for a story, but you have to fill in some of the blanks with, with, with reading books and reading comics. Totally. Um, and 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 it, I feel like it's incredibly pleasurable. It's my favorite entertainment medium. It's my mm -hmm. favorite storytelling medium. But as far as getting people interested, that's something where you know we need our schools and libraries to have more promotions. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, in uh, fact, like yeah, like I, when I grew up at school, mm -hmm. and and I'm sure you did too. Didn't you have like Scholastic show up and like oh, you could yeah. order books, or they'd have the Scholastic book fair? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! No. Why isn't and that, there a free comic book day oh, fair at public schools? I, I think that'd be a tough sell. And the reason why do I you? say that is, be, yeah, I do because I think comics. I think as as far as we've come, and as ubiquitous as superhero culture is with American culture, I think that comic books are still fighting the same stigmas they were fighting 35, 40, 50 years ago. I think that this, if, if you were to, I mean, ask any educator you know who is trying or has tried or has succeeded in implementing comics into an, into an English curriculum. And you will see, they're, they will immediately react and they will give you the answer of like, I have had to deal with opposition from parents, teachers, and the children themselves. Like it is, and, and not, and it's tough because it's like, that's true. You can't argue with it. You can't be like- We just had like, yeah, like some Southern- uh, states like you know looking to oh. ban mouse or something right. which is a They're, pretty critically acclaimed book yeah a book so maybe you're right that like mm -hmm. schools aren't the easiest but but if you can have book fairs yes. how different is like that material from like you know like you, you'd have like you know your dog mans and your mm -hmm. you know whatever oh, baby like that, mouse that, and uh yeah kids material to sell you don't yeah. have to have everything i'm just saying that no. like yeah if they could no, like, think... put free comic book days in public venues like a school yeah. or a library, it might it might attract some some positive attention, and and maybe you don't have something as serious as as Marvel and DC, let alone your IDWs and your booms and your images. But oh, it, it's sure. just an idea. No, I, I love it, and I think I mean it's worth trying. Honestly, like any any venue that is outside of the comic book shop, and I'm not excluding comic book stores, nor am I diminishing them. But if they are in your comic book store then you already have them. Like you are, you are only catering to your, to, to the same demographic you already have. You're not, you're not branching out. You know, you might be I, bringing back some people that are like lapsed comic yes, fans or like great. that they're willing to bring in their kids and hopefully like start a new generation of readers. Right. But it, it's not, it's not enough of a different audience in my, they opinion. don't represent like 30%. It's, it's more like one. Um, I think the most important thing, and it's so passive, unfortunately, but I think it's really important uh, for comics because it's certainly how I got into them in my, myself, is it's all about discoverability and it's all about ownership. Yeah. Yeah. It's it you as, as much as you could you could have leaders, actors, politicians talk and talk up comics. No one is going to heed that more than the person that is being catered to discovering it all by themselves. And that's why it's so important to have comic books in places where discoverability can take place. Comics. And, a, yeah. Yeah. I mean, free point. comic book day is one of those opportunities where it's like, well, it's free. So it's, it, there is no barrier to entry. Cause as I, as I've always said, the barrier to entry for anything you want someone to try has to be razor thin or non-existent and comic books. Sure. Can consistently, have multiple barriers in place to keep you or the or the general populace distribution from and price, into it. distribution price and availability. It's just insane. And uh, but discoverability. I loved your suggestion. Airports. I mean, like if it was if comma if 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 lower racks. Unfortunately, we've seen it done wrong. Like we've seen it done wrong in places like Walmart. Remember the DC Walmart initiative and how it was like it, it excited me when they announced it. I was like, comic books in same. Walmart, great idea. Nobody could find it. They weren't in the periodical section. They I were in like like the trading cards and, and they were stuff, but like even then it was like buried. It was buried and it had its own special little like display box. Like, no, 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 no. Comic books need to be face front. Why? Because the ad is the cover. They need they, they are made designed to be seen and grabbed. 
And I'd say like, you know, like really fight for that shelf space, but like uh, publishers, see if you can like work out a deal for an end cap for at least like six yes. months and then move into the periodicals from there. Right. Something like that. you got to yeah. have it face front. Now, if comic books could, I love the end cap idea where let's say yeah. you're in a, a Target and you're at the action figure section. Which, which I always go to, even though I haven't bought an action figure for myself. I and do actually, the same thing. Right. I always page punchers now. Those page punchers are great. I, I, and they do have a comic in them. They do, which is a really cool idea. Um, it's, so that's, that's, that's something. It's trying. I, that's the thing. I, I, I appreciate that Todd McFarlane is like, right? okay, I'll single handedly try to solve this for everybody. <laughs> I do, and I appreciate it. And maybe if they too. were more, I think that if the page punchers were on the end caps, if they were more visible, because. Again, it like it, it's so frustrating because it's like it's an aisle, but at the same time, if they don't know to go to the aisle, you still have lost them. But for, if you for, have for the ones that I've been going to sell, and maybe targets are different. It's not like on the end cap, but usually I see it on the edge, the corner of the end cap. Like so, it's the first thing you see as you walk past an aisle. So I, okay. I do feel that that's still pretty prominent. Yeah, that's not um, bad. That's I would and 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 usually that's almost like right across from sort of their book area yeah. where they've got like, you know, their manga and their dog mans and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So they need, that's where they need to be. It's something. That's, that's exactly where Marvel and DC and, and for the rest of the comic book publishers need to start investing in. They need to get like, and, and, and they could expand, they could only do graphic novels and it would be a step forward. Um, if they just put them on the same rack as, I mean, if manga can be there, yeah, then you've already lost. And I, like you've already failed to do it because manga had to come here and gain footholds in our culture and then hustle their way onto shelves where books go and people go to them. Marvel and DC and everyone else, like the, the comic book industry in general, why did you drop the ball so hard or why did you only back the direct market? You know, it's, it's, I, know, I've seen and what's worse, I've seen it in other places, like the FYE, which is another store that's like might as well not even exist anymore because it's going so, out of business. Like, out of <laughs> but but going back five years, F, I remember F. Uh, yeah, it must have been five years. I'm thinking of like during the time of leading up to Infinity War, they started to get graphic novels in, and they were trashed. Like whenever I saw them, I'd go into an, an FYE, and they'd and be like know, I, torn you, and on the floor. Yeah nuts well you know if it's like free comic book day you're giving it away it's kind of like a quick promotion yes but that that is the concern for like our floppies and stuff like this oh yeah these things do not hold up well in public <laughs> areas and i think that that's probably why like somewhere like toys r us was like you know what if we sell them those things are going to just get manhandled and they're going to be worthless before anyone wants to buy them. they did right? my toys r us did have them like my toys r us had comic books like floppy comic books oh they did it yeah, like in an aisle. And I remember being very surprised. It was right on the other end of the video game section, which is a perfect place. And uh, yeah, and they were, they, they were, and they were trashed. <laughs> and they were not, they weren't. And it was interesting because they weren't like, some of them were new, you know, like two weeks old. Yeah. And then others were either reprints or God knows, you know, it was just, it, I remember seeing like, I'd see a Gruenwald Avengers up there and I go, where the hell they get this? <laughs> but you know, w there's a couple things about why I was just seeing if I had like, um, okay. Like I look at a manga, right? Yes. We know that this sells very, very well. And, and it's <laughs> yeah. growing huge. Comics are mm -hmm. growing, but manga is really growing. Yes. I don't see why some American publishers that ha already have a big library couldn't necessarily try this. Like, mm -hmm. think of how affordable it would be. I, I would suggest, like, get a collection of, like, a really critically acclaimed, like, um, Immortal Hulk or mm -hmm. um, Superior Spider-Man. Something yes. like that, yeah. right? Batman Black Mirror. Printed right. in black and white at this size. Mm -hmm. And I bet you you could come up with an affordable price. And it's not like you're trying to trick people into thinking, like, hey, that's it's manga. manga. <laughs> but I bet you could come up with an affordable price. And here's what I think people like about this. Yeah. Easy to carry around, affordable and bingeable. Right. Okay. Is this the way that we want to create all new superhero books? Probably not because like we've got a system for that, but why couldn't we collect an acclaimed run 
over mm-hmm. several volumes. And I bet you, you could come up with something very affordable there. Yeah. I would also suggest that don't just change the color to like a black and white grayscale. I'd say take the art and actually have people put in like screen tones. Yeah. To, to, but but that's just my, I don't know. Don't you think that that's a possibility that would- oh, Absolutely. Could... Oh, I don't, I don't just think it's a possibility. I think that what's frustrating is the industry thinks they've already done it. You know, like I've seen smaller scale- YA geared Marvel books, um, Young Avengers, uh, Spider Go- Spider Girl, like uh, Spider Gwen. Do something with Miss Marvel, I feel like Miss Marvel, Moon Girl. Like I've seen like Miles these smaller Morales. scale. They're kind of yeah, Miles Morales. They're kind of like that, but they're shorter. They're full color and they're not manga sized. They're like they're yeah. certainly smaller sized, but they're not that way. And I've also seen I've seen um. Remember that Marvel Age Spider-Man book? I remember having like one of those, like a very small, again, not manga sized, but like smaller scale, black and white, gray scale, uh, newsprint books. But I don't know where I, you know, I saw it in the aftermarket, like at a thrift store, not in a bookshop uh, or or on a newsstand. And I wonder about that because I, you know, you also remember, um, what were they? Uh, not the Epic Collections, but before that, Oh yeah, um, that was uh, uh, essentials. essentials. Marvel Essentials, yeah. right? Where Marvel Essentials was great. Yes, again geared a little bit more to fans, but so affordable. Right. I love those. It was a great yeah. way to read everything chronologically. Super yes. affordable. Super I think, affordable. And maybe it's just the problem was the size and the access. Like make maybe. it smaller, make them more available, and get them everywhere. I really think that sometimes, like, don't get me wrong, some of manga like has really different types of stories that are super engaging and everything. But I think there's something to be said about the binge ability of reading mm-hmm. like a really big story quickly. Yeah. That, and I think that that you see that like our, you know, U S and, and Western trade paperbacks also sell very well. I think yes. that people like to read a slightly bigger story if they're not the kind of people like you and I that go pick up, are weekly comics like mm-hmm. there's something to be said for reading like a big full story all at once. absolutely but i also think that there's a problem with like you can't be too big you know it's, you got to get that you got to get that balance it can't be like yep. you can't just throw an omnibus at somebody because they're gonna go oh, oh well, that's too much yeah. you know it's got to be bingeable it's got but i love the bingeability of it because of course that's that's another aspect of our media consult- consumption yeah is that we binge like we are wow. a binge culture I, I would be interested. I don't know if they could like necessarily on free comic book day give you what's usually like a $10 book. They can't make that for free, but could they make a version for like a buck? Five bucks? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I, I think know. that it's, it's it, worth it's, trying. It's, I wish that they would try it more. I wish I'd see a little bit more uh, experimentation with what they could do for the free comic book day stuff. Um, you know what I just thought of that's related? They also yeah. have that, like, um, is it Halloween Fest or something? Yes, like yes, they have their Halloween free comic book day, basically. Right, that, that, that's kind of cute that they've like come up with sort of a second thing about six months later. Yeah, I love that. I don't know that one as well, though. It's I, I've, I've participated in it. I actually, I used to be, like, on their thing. They'd send us a box. And uh, and we would look at, like, all the, at the samplings, and then I would put, I would give them away at, at, on, on Halloween. Um, but... A, I think it's slowed down, and B, it's not as organized. It's just like they're yeah. doing it; they have a logo for it, and they put them out. But there's no real coordination, and the there's publishers no marketing be- behind that one in the same. No, way. no, 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 no. Yeah. and the and it doesn't seem like the publishers are terribly excited about it either. Like you know, they're they're not excited about promoting it themselves. So it's all on Diamond's shoulders, and Diamond is, as you know, like a, a mom and pop organization. <laughs> so it's like, how are they gonna? coordinate that much uh but yeah it's tough um you know what they they probably need to do overall they being like the comic book industry yes um probably a little more marketing behind this stuff would make a huge difference even if you told them like hey guess what there's free comic book day go to your comic store and get it but you and i grew up and you and i and i'm positive you remember these the animated gi joe commercials for the comic book yeah those were pretty amazing and i understand they had Hasbro's budget behind it because technically yeah. it was promoting the toys, but those carried a lot of weight. Like every couple months, you got like about a almost a 30 second animated version of that comic book. And they're like, find out in Marvel Comics. Yeah. And if 
Marvel or DC could justify that with, say, um, look at events. One of their movies, like oh yeah, yeah. Of, like the budget, like was was also to do like a, a twenty to thirty second animation, oh. and oh then like God. go like see it in theaters or read the comics at your local comic shop. I they could feel like a, a TV ad like that, an animated one, would carry so much weight. That is that is such a solid idea. It's so much better because you saw. Uh, I'm, I'll bet the. Um... The fact that at, I think it's at the end of the Flash trailer. One of the things for DC they had like they, a, they, they oh, mentioned sure. the comics. I loved it. The comics, it's fantastic. But wouldn't it have been really? But wouldn't it be really cool? Remember at the end of Green Lantern when they were like, also there's comic books. Like at the end of the at the post credit scene after the post credit scene, it was like you can get Green Lantern books and here they all are, which I've never seen in any other comic book movie. Uh, but then again, the only thing they did right. Yeah, and, and by by the way, by the time those books were up, the theater was empty. But. Uh, wouldn't it be cool? You can't do they, it just once. Yeah, you can't do it once, but they also have to do it. You have to be comfortable with it. But I love the idea of integrating, you know, an animated component or at least some kind of thing. Like, so hell, cool. if if Marvel at the end of, uh, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming, you know, uh, Captain America comes out and he's like, so you're disappointed by the post credit scene. If he'd come out, leaned on the chairman like, you know, this kind of reminds me of an issue of Spider-Man and just tells you what volume it is. That would be great. Be kind of really awesome. Uh, but I like the idea of there being like, I mean, DC could do it immediately where they could yeah. go at the end of uh, the Batman. They could have had like a couple of scenes from long Halloween, the movie they made. What then, if like, like this, became the, the credits, that's perfect real estate. Yes. <laughs> as the credits scroll, what if you started like just having, just showing a bunch of pages, covers and panels yes. Yes. from comics. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. I know that that's like a big ask. That that's it is a different, big ask. And that like these people are like, this is my vision. But hey, you're basing it on something. If you could like make that a regular thing in, in yeah. these movies to show the pages, because they have a quick like, thanks to. Yeah. What like Walt like, Simonson. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah. That would keep people watching and engaged until your post credit scene. If you, I, I'll, I'll do you one better. You do that that thing where you take a, a spectacular sequence from the comics that is uh, the basis for something that happened in the movie. And you'd show that sequence, you know, it's like a page, it fades into the next page. At the end of it, it shows you the what the what the collected volumes cover is, you know, so that people know to look for that. Go you know, like what you just wanna saw. Or, yeah, want to know more? Or like at your, at where comics are sold. That's enough. Yeah, where comics are sold. And and yeah, like and you could tie in saying like, you know, May free comic book day, maybe. May but free that's comic probably day. more of a TV thing, but uh than, yeah. than like an evergreen movie. But yeah. I'm just saying that like um there's like real estate there that like wouldn't necessarily have to cost hardly anything to promote right, these books. It could be worked into a budget that like, you know, it overindulges on more frivolous things. I uh, I feel like Free Comic Book Day is one of those things where it's it's been 20 years, so I guess we could say it's a success. <laughs> but at the same time, I think that we're both touching on the idea that they could, could be more. more. It could and be more. even if it was just a free comic, a really well executed commercial that you made into a YouTube ad, yeah, that would be enough <laughs> to start. You know, especially because like, but, but like I said, barrier to entry where it's like free comic book day. Okay. I'm intrigued. Where is it at your local comic book store? I never read a comic book in my life. I have no idea where they are. Uh, well then go to my comic shop locator.com. What? Yeah. You know, like, that, that, it, that's the call day? to action is my comic shop locator.com. I think that's, that's the only way, like you have to make it. So it's like, but the message can't ads. be, yeah, you gotta do ads. It's a whole thing. If, if you gotta I was doing it, I'd be like, it. okay. Part, part of it is like, you know, like we're, we're, we're producing these comics, but if we want, like, you know, if Marvel wants people to see their comics at DC or IDW or whoever wants them to see their comics, yeah, make, make just a very simple, like a 30 or 15 second ad and put yeah. it here on YouTube. And for like March and April, it's in front of channels like ours for, for the people that don't have totally. like YouTube premium. Right. I mean, you've seen, um, I, we've seen those trailers they make. Do they turn them into ads? Wait, the trailers for what? Oh, that like Marvel and DC make for their events where they're like, you know, oh, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. almost like a motion con. Uh, no. And, you know, I just saw like a really great trailer for, say, like, um, 
upcoming like radiant black ca catalyst war or something yeah. like that and and kyle higgins does a lot of this stuff kyle if wow. you're if you're watching yeah <laughs> what about like uh you, you know taking some of your animation or something like that uh and and turning that into an ad and, and just seeing if that works i don't know yeah no he well and kyle knows because he's younger and he's hungry and it's his He's, he's more he's, willing to he's innovate. Very, uh, he's doing a lot to, to try to be innovative. Um, and it reminds me of stuff that Robert Kirkman used to always do with yeah. his like long running books. He'd have like, you know, sort of new jumping on points, um, yep. a, a version that was only a dollar, things like that, yeah. like throughout Invincible's run. And, and I'd love to see some more innovation like that, not just from these um, individuals, creator owned, but, you know, like from the companies so that like we could promote something like free comic book day properly to, to Absolutely. a new audience. Yes. Cause I think we've done it. I think I, I, you know, 20 years is enough time, 21 years now, but like 20 years is enough. Well, enough we skipped time. a year for the pandemic. We did. That's true. So it is 20, uh, but like 20 years is enough time to say we've done it this way. We st we need to start What's expanding or moving on. What's the next step? Because if you don't evolve, you, you, you're going to become stagnant and it's going to fade away. And I don't want it to fade away because I, I think we both talked about how we have a great time having yes. an excuse to, to go, go to the comic book shop. And there's going to be like, you know, sales and promotions. And but that's the retailers and the retailers will take care of the, the retail aspect. If yep. you are going to invest in putting out this material. I feel that you do have a little bit of a responsibility to help promote it as well so okay. um you know comics are tough there in the in, in the regard of like whose responsibility is it to promote it i'm having that right now where i have to promote my vampirella cover yes it's a lot of like pressure to find outlets and ask certain people to like give a retweet or or, oh, or like yeah. reach out and be like sal any availability it's a lot of responsibility I, sometimes i wish that you know um the really big publishers and stuff yeah. like that might might shoulder some of that or or their corporate overlords you know yes. you, can, you can afford <laughs> to promote these things a little bit yeah you own it it's not enough to say like you know yeah they own it you want they it want to pro yeah they should want to promote it but uh yeah that's where we are man it's it's you know i i love these kind of conversations because i think that while we, we, we didn't have necessarily like a oh this is what they need to do we open the door to a conversation that these folks hopefully will be having that uh might lead to some innovation some ideas and some uh, uh you know effort to to give us something that uh you know get more people in this because yeah. more people we have the better it gets uh yeah. but i'm excited to check out that vampirella cover so if you want to check out that vampirella cover you folks check out the indiegogo uh campaign link in the comments down below this video and you will find it and you can check it out you can see it i don't want to show it because I, I want people to look at it i want them to go and see it and you can see it okay. at that campaign uh, thank you but uh but check it out because thank it's a lot you. of fun and uh drawn uh by you and i understand that it's not just now there's a lot of opportunities in that indiegogo i remember seeing like a lot of uh different options is there yeah. a signature option in there yeah there is all right there's a signature option i think there's like i haven't checked lately there might still be two slots for a remark like i'll do a little sketch on the cover yes you get like various versions um, there are even add-ons for like people that really like my show. Like you can add some comic tropes merchandise, like my little mascot Infotron <laughs> and stuff like that. So there are some fun um, options. And you know, maybe I'm being like too grandiose, but like I would love to see this be successful, not just for me. Sincerely, like if it if this was successful in someone like Dynamite's eyes, that means that publishers are going to look at all of the comic tubers and be like, well, what other opportunities are there to work together here and there? Right. And that would be right. fun. Um, you know, some we're doing criticism, but we are fans of the material. There, there are opportunities to, to work together here and there. And I would love to see other comic tubers like do ideas for like, you know, like uh, the, the, this sort of like, you know, a cover or a story or something like that. I would love to yeah. see that obviously they need to see that these things are successful to, to yes. inspire them. So, yeah. Is that a uh, Vampirella statue behind you? Is that one of those like original ones from the nineties? Cause I very much remember. This is art. more, this is newer. Um, okay. Dynamite gave me a bunch of these things to sort of um, do. I've had some giveaways on my channel lately. Awesome. This one is specifically based on the, 
pretty famous cover by um, uh, Jose Gonzalez, like a really famous painted yeah. cover, sculpted by a guy named Steve Kewis. And then they nice. also gave me some um, ones by uh, Art Germ, Stanley Art Oh, Germ. cool. Wow. So That's I've been great. giving some of these away on my channel lately. If you uh, That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, my you know, second channel, Pros and Cons, where I do – oh, you and I – uh, if you yeah. folks watch uh, Monday's live stream with Sal, just know that yeah. like basically when he's wrapping his up, that's when mine starts on the channel pros and cons. Exactly, we're like a lead in. I love that. I, I that's that's exactly it the feels like to see. yeah, like must see TV, but for comics. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done it in a while because I uh, I've been really distracted lately. But sometimes I'll be like, all right, stay tuned for Chris, and then I go <laughs> as a kind of like cone, like you know, uh, uh, Jay yeah, yeah, yeah. Conan kind of thing. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. Chris, yeah stay, tuned here. For, stay tuned for comic tropes. Yeah, check out pros and cons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> Hope I don't uh, roll my car over and get on, caught on fire again. Oh my <laughs> God, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, check that's, out uh, that's our topic next time, folks. Oh, We're going to talk about how much we wars. both dislike Jay Leno. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Uh, check out more pros and cons and comic tropes, and we'll see you guys next time here at Comic Pop Returns. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>